Hey everybody! So today I'm going to show you how to make pressed plates using foam and paper templates. And you might be asking yourself, what is a pressed plate? Well, pressed refers to the technique to make it. We're going to press the clay down into foam using a template and we are going to make a plate. So pressed plate. And I've got a few examples to show you all. So here is a pressed plate that I made. So if you look, you can see it's, it's a plate and it's got a little bit of a, a raised slope here. It's not completely flat. I also do them where they have a thrown foot added on, and I will show that in a later video, how to make a thrown foot. But the first thing that you need to talk about here is we need to talk about the template. And I really like to make my own templates. These are some that I made from craft foam, and it's pretty easy. What I did, it was I took a piece of paper and I folded it into eighths, I drew a design, you know, I drew a circle, and then I went along that curve. I don't know if you can see right there, that shape that I cut. You know, it's perfectly symmetrical, ideally. And if we open this up, it's like making snowflakes. You remember when we used to make snowflakes back in elementary school? Ta-da! And so I took this shape, and I laid it on a piece of craft foam, and I just traced it, and then I cut the craft foam out. And the reason I use the craft foam is really durable. It's gonna last. You could use the paper, but it's not gonna last. Like you could use it for one session of plate making, maybe. But every time you lay this on the paper, it's gonna get wet. So this is no good. Great for reference and great to keep around for inspiration and for when you wanna make more. But for permanence, use craft foam. So what I did is when I did that one, I made three different sizes. So now I've got these templates in three different sizes, so I can make three different size plates. And this is actually what the smallest template, so here's one drying, so you can see this shape. This is actually from this template. And what else can you do? Well, say you don't wanna make your own templates. Say that you don't like to, you know, maybe you don't like to trace and cut on craft foam. I don't know, that's possible. People don't like to do that. Or you don't have the time, or you feel like you don't have the skill. And I completely get that. So what you can do is, you can go to your favorite store that sells paper products, a hobby store or a craft store, and you could get some holiday paper plates. This is a really great shape. You can actually see the shape from this side better. And when it's finished, this is actually a finished shape. So you can use this for your template instead. It is paper, although it's laminated on one side, so it's gonna last longer than a sheet of paper, but not as long as craft foam. The other thing that I like to use, and I teach my students a lot, are these things called cake boards. So if you go into a craft store, you can find cake boards. Wilton makes them, and all kinds of other cake manufacturers make them. Try not to blind you with the glare. So here's the other side. And I love this gorgeous scalloped edge you get. And that is, basically where this one came from. So this is a bigger template. I used a smaller template for this plate, but that's the same idea. So using this shape, I got this plate. All right, so there's the templates. Here's another craft foam template that I made. And here is the plate out of that. So you can see it's, you can see the lobe. This is a, is this a six lobe, seven lobed plate. All right, so you can make your own templates. If you don't feel like that's your thing, you can buy templates at the craft and hobby store. So that's step one. So that's how do you get a template? We covered that. All right, so the next thing, I'm just gonna move these finished pieces out of the way because we don't need them right now. So I'm just gonna sit them off, off to the side and we're gonna work on this new one. So today, what I'm working on is saucers. So I like to make saucers uh, that fit under the cups, you know, and you want it to fit perfectly so that when you set your cup down in It has a nice place to rest. You know, it's not sliding all over the place So I went ahead and measured out how big I want my Plate to be my little saucer and I made it out of craft foam. So this is just a freehand drawing You can actually see my drawing if you look so you can see all my is that big enough? Nope, gotta go bigger. Nope, still not big enough. Gotta go bigger So all those lines are me making it bigger every time but this looks nicer, so we'll just use this side and we won't look at that. All right, so let's actually get to the making of the pressed plate. So I've rolled out on my slab roller 
a slab of clay that's about three eighths of an inch thick. And you do not have to use a slab roller. You can roll it out if you have a rolling pin and you have some of the thickness strips, you can use that. You can just eyeball it. Doesn't matter, it's up to you. I really like using my slab roller because I get this consistent thickness the whole way through. But if that's not a big deal for you, roll it out yourself, that's fine. All right, so because I rolled through canvas, I have this canvas texture. I'm actually gonna move. Let's me move a few things, move my visual aids out of the way so I can pull this closer to you guys. And that way you can really see, oh yeah, that's better. I'm trying out this new format for my YouTube videos. Usually, I'm vertical, and I decided to go horizontal because that's the way the frame is when you're looking at it on your computer, when you're watching the replays. So, I'm trying it. And there's all this extra space on each side of me that I'm not used to having. Like, usually I don't have this or this. Usually it's just right down the middle. So I'm finding it that I'm cutting my own head off or you can't see what I'm doing and I don't, I don't want to do that. So this is first time shooting horizontal. Okay, so canvas. When you have any texture on your slab, you wanna get that out. Now, maybe you don't, maybe you want texture, but for me, I'm doing a lot of surface decoration, so I want as smooth of a surface as I can get. So I'm gonna get rid of all that and I'm gonna actually be compressing the clay a bit, which is good because it'll help prevent cracking down the line. And I'm just using a yellow rib. So this is a Cheryl Mud tool. But you can use a metal rib or anything else. And I am just going to smooth the clay out, getting rid of all these little canvas textures. And then once I have that done, so I went pulling it towards me and I'm going side to side. And I'm not really trying to stretch the clay. All I'm really doing is skimming the surface to smooth it down. So I want a nice, smooth slab. Baby smooth! Okay. So now, now the other side's going to have canvas on it too. And I'm going to show you how I take care of that in a minute. So I'm going to lay my little template down. And I'm going to cut just a really rough shape. So just like a rough outline. And I'm going to put that on. You can use a wear board. I'm going to use this bat that I pulled aside. This is just a throwing bat. And you just take this off and I flip it right onto it. Now, if I was doing a bigger plate and using a bigger piece of clay, what I would do is I would use two hands. You know, I would, I would make the changes necessary for a bigger piece of clay. Slide this down. Looks good. Yeah. All right, and so now I'm gonna compress the other side. Smooth and compress the clay. And you can see it stretches just a little bit, but you wanna keep even pressure as you do this step, because you do not wanna distort the clay. And what I mean by that is, you know, you want your thickness to stay the same. You don't want it to be like have a gouge or something in it where it's thicker in one area and thinner in another. All right. Simple. We lay our template on whatever size template you're using, whether it's your homemade template or it's one that you bought. Found templates are good too. Like if you have some old plates that you love, you could use them. And so I lay the foam on and I am just cutting around the outside of the foam, just barely resting the knife on it. I'm not putting a lot of pressure against the foam because the foam isn't rigid it's not gonna support the knife. If I push against it with this knife, it's actually gonna distort my shape. So it's basically like drawing a line in the clay with a knife. Ta-da! So that's what we have, right? And now I'm just gonna get rid of this excess clay. And I'm gonna recycle all this clay. I've got a little pile going over here and I'll just wedge this up and use it for something else. All right, so I'll go through and do that. Let's see, should we do another shape? Could be fun. Let's see, let's do this one. I'll show you how to cut with this one. Just make sure it's gonna fit. We're gonna go this way with it. When I'm rolling out my slabs, what I do is I stretch the clay out first a bit so that I know it's gonna fit my template. 
especially when I'm rolling it through the through the slab roller because if I don't make my slab of clay wide enough to go through the roller then once I get it through and then you lay your template on you find out that it's short um, you will not be happy you will be very sad and then I will be sad for you and that will not be a good day for anybody all right we're gonna use this side I know it looks gross but it's just actually it's just a little bit of mold from wet clay being on it so I'm gonna compress this side and smooth it out and then we'll cut this other shape so these paper plates I got last year around the holidays I bet you couldn't tell right and I've been using them I use them quite a bit actually and they're surprisingly holding up much better than I thought they would. Like I was sure by now they would have been wet and nasty and falling apart, but no, they just keep going. So I keep using them. But if I wanted this shape to last, I would trace it on craft foam. And I really should do that. And maybe I will. In all my free time. And if you're asking yourself why there's no background music, well, apparently last time I did my YouTube video, I had some background music playing, just a Pandora playlist going on, and there was copyrighted music on it. And because of that, my video got pulled and banned. So, no music, unless I do some editing afterwards, which I don't know if I'm gonna. Like I, I'm, I really like the here, this is live, happening now, whatever happens, happens, one take deal. I do it all in one take, no editing. Okay, so there's this shape. I'm just smoothing it out a little bit. Pretty cool, huh? And so I'll set this aside along with the other slabs. So they, depending on the size piece I'm making, you know, for little plates, they're ready to be pressed fast. For big, pre big plates, they need to sit for almost an hour, and it depends on your clay. I'm using a porcelain. It actually dries pretty quick. So this will be ready in about a half an hour for me to press it, but the other one is almost ready immediately because it's so small. So the smaller plate you use, the faster it's ready for pressing. I'm gonna sit this over here, and I have got a little tray of ones that I had cut out a little earlier. And I'm going to move this out of the way and we'll do the actual pressing. So this slab I will use to make more little saucers later. And I'm going to show you how I do the pressing part, which is the whole key to this process, is the pressing of the clay. Now, I press into foam and you could use like egg crate foam for mattresses. You could use, um, I guess, packing foam, like soft packing foam, you know, for, for soft goods. But I found the best foam is if you can get a hold of either a cushion from sofa, a sofa cushion or a chair cushion, like the interior foam is this really closed foam. This actually came from my child's mattress, like my child's toddler mattress. When she got done with it, I took it. That's just how I am. I take my kids things. And you can see it's, it's kind of dirty. I've had it in the studio. It just sits around. It's huge. Like it's ginormous. This is a big piece of foam. And the great thing about this foam is because it's so dense, it has a lot of resist. And I can really push down hard and far, and that allows me to get the sides to pop up and get a really great slope. If it was too thin, you're gonna push down and you're actually gonna hit your tabletop or whatever hard surface you're working on, and then you're not gonna get this nice slope. You'll get a little bit of slope, but I really want a good slope. So that's why I use this. Now. The other component, which I haven't talked about yet, and I'm not sure where I said it, uh, is, well, you gotta press it in with something, right? You can't just, you know, lay it on here and it magically press itself. So what I use are these little wooden, they're like plaques, they're little wooden discs that you can get also at the hobby store, or you can make your own. If you're really good with woodworking tools, you can cut your own discs. And I use a circle because the saucer that I'm making needs a circle for my teacups, but you could do squares. I've done squares in the past. And for those, you could just use a bisque tile to press in. You could also make your own shape for doing the pressing out of clay. So if you wanted something a little more ornate, you could roll out a slab and you could cut a shape. Like say I wanted 
the inside of this plate to match the exterior pattern, I could just cut out a slab of clay and let it dry, bisque fire, and use that to press in, and it would be a smaller version of my silhouette on the outside. So for all sizes, it's the same technique. No matter what size plate I'm doing, whether it's a great big 17 inch platter or it's one of these little small saucers, I just lay my foam, my, my clay on the foam. And you can see this foam's pretty tall. So usually I stand on a stool to, to see, but I think for this little guy I can do it and not have to get up on something. So the one thing that you need to watch out for you need to make sure whatever you're pressing in the center is actually centered. So whatever I'm using here, I need to make sure. Now I've never, I've never made this shape before. This is a new shape for me. So I don't know what it's gonna look like when I press into it. It could be bad. It really could. Let's hope not. I'm looking at it now. I think it's okay. I see a few areas that I would wanna refine and that's part of the testing process whenever you come up with a new shape. All right, ready? So this is the magic, this is the fun part. So I have it on there, I'm gonna apply even pressure. I'm gonna press down and kind of rock it a little bit and see how far up it popped those sides, really far up. And that is important because it's gonna slump. It's gonna open up a little bit and sag. That's just the nature of clay. So I don't wanna start with a really flat piece because it will just slump down to being a flat piece of clay. And that is not any good. I'm gonna grab this bat and we'll put this on it. So a shape this small, you saw I really didn't have to wait very long, maybe 10 minutes after rolling it out and cutting it, which is good because if you're working on a bunch of them at a time, once you get them all rolled out and say you cut 10 or 15 of these little guys out, by the time you cut your last one out, the first one that you started on is ready to be pressed. All right, so now we just pop this guy out and now you can see, I'll give you a, a close-up view, so you can see the sides of that little tiny saucer and the top, so you can see the shape. And what I do is I hold it up and I just spin it around, and you could do this on a banding wheel. And I look and I make any adjustments, I just want it to be even, and that's it. And I will set this aside and let it dry. I will dry it overnight, completely covered, and then probably for the next week, loosely covered. And the one last thing, I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. So whenever you're making slab work like this that's not thrown on the wheel, when you hand build, what's gonna happen is this center part is gonna try to bow up on you. It's just what it does. The clay is drying, as it dries it pulls away from the bat, and it bows. So what I use to prevent that from happening is I make these really cute little sandbags and you can make them oh, hold on I didn't grab one out first so just bear with me while I get one here's a little one okay so you can make these out of kitty litter you can make them out of beans you can make them out of rice and this is just a shirt this is a shirt sleeve right here that's all it is a shirt sleeve so like my shirt here I cut the sleeve off tie a knot in this end Fill it full of whatever material I want to use and then tie a knot in the other end. No sewing. All you have to do is cut with scissors. Awesome, right? Same thing. This actually was a t-shirt. After I cut the sleeves off, you have, you know, the, the middle, the front and back that are basically a square. When you lay that flat, put your material in the middle, gather up the sides, and then use an elastic band. This elastic band, so this is a, a, a rubber band off my clay. So I'm reusing those green rubber bands that come off our bags of clay. And so then for letting this sit overnight, and maybe for the next day too, I'll put plastic over it. So I'll take a sheet of plastic, and I will just press it in lightly, take one of these, and I have them in all different sizes, and I'll just set it in like that. And so this will sit overnight covered and this will hold it down so it's not going to try to bow up in the middle. Just make sure that the sandbag or whatever kind of material you have in here, your little bag, your weight bag, 
isn't so big that it pressed down on the outside and is actually pressing your plate back down. So you don't want really anything bigger than that interior circle. This one is a bit too big, but I have a ton more, so I'll switch it out. So that's it. That's how you make a pressed plate. And there's many ways to do it. I would love to see your comments. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Give me some feedback in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this. And also, what else you'd like to see me do? You know, this was a request. Someone had sent me a message asking to see how I make these plates. And I make them all the time. So for me, I'm thinking, oh, well, you guys know how to do that. I've shown that, but I actually hadn't shown that yet. So here we go. Now we have a complete video showing from start to finish how to make one of these plates. The next step for more advanced ceramic artists, if you wanted to, you could throw a foot ring and attach it. And I'll do a video down the line showing how I do that. You can also use this technique to make cake stands where, let me grab one, where you make your plate, so here's my pressed plate on top, and you throw this bottom part on the wheel. So this is a pedestal foot that I've thrown, like that, ta-da, and I've attached it. So it's turned it into a cake plate. So this could be like a mini tiny, this could be a candle stand. If I threw a base and attached it to that, that would look cute, right? Put your candles on that. You could do bigger ones to make big cake plates. You can do it the opposite way, and I don't have any right here to show you all, but if you press the plate and then you actually flip the plate over and you attach on the underside instead of this side up here, you attach down here, you can create this really lovely apron sort of effect. I'm going to do a video about that. I'm going to do that one because I think that is a cool plate stand, cake stand and people will like that. I think you guys will like that. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and watching me make my slab press plates these little mini saucers. I think they're cute. I think they're going to be great. Here's one. Let's just do, let's do a dumb one. Hold on. So here's the one I showed cutting this slab out. So this is the one, the more rectangular form right here. And this is one using a store-bought cake board as my template. And so you can see, how I'll bring it really, really, really close for you guys to see the detail on that. Okay. Cool. Well, I think this was good. I can't wait to hear back from you all and let me know what you'd like me to do next. I'm going to try to get one up a week, so every Wednesday, be checking the YouTube channel and um, follow me, of course. Give me thumbs up, give me likes, and you can always find me on various social media and uh, my web, you can go to my webpage, you could come find me on Periscope or Bid Chat or right here on YouTube. Alright guys, it's been great. I'll catch you later. Bye.